All right. Um, hi, hi, guys. Welcome back to Hearthstone Champions League. Uh, we had a small technical problem, uh, but now we are back. And uh, this is Nimjan Raven. We actually just saw a game, Strike Pro vs. Show. They played Druid on Druid, and it was super fast and, and really amazing with uh, Strike Pro having a lot of tokens, Savage Roar, and uh, Shredder dropping the, the Flame Tongue Totem. But now we are in game two, Warlock versus Paladin. Raven, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. Oh. Oh, we were in game two. It looks like there might be just some, uh, uh, just a small issue there. Is the game just ended on turn one? So I think there might have just been a small issue there. So the guys are probably just going to lock in the rematch. We'll just have a quick check on what's going on. to a crowd just because there were some issues as, as you saw with the stream there uh, All right, guys, we're back. Uh, so sorry for the break. Like we had to figure out uh, technical issues because we're running a couple of streams at the same time uh, in different languages. So um, our our stream crashed, so the admin stopped the game for a moment. But now we're back, and the players will resume the game as fast as possible. Raven, are you with me? Yes, I am here. And uh, yeah, you know we're both suffering for some technical issues tonight, as my Skype did crash earlier. So we're we're one one in that aspect. <laughs> yeah, kind of <laughs> internet, right? <laughs> But what, yeah. can you, what can you do? And um, well, we are able to watch those amazing games, you know, sitting at homes and uh, actually casting from our couches. So it's pretty good. Yeah, can't complain too much. <laughs> but yeah, we continue. So the score with this is 1 0, right? Yeah, Strafko won with that uh, amazing Druid game. Um, a very fast with those small dudes getting Flame Tongue Totem from the Shredder and rushed uh, Shaw's Druid. And uh, now I'm not sure what decks would they will pick, but uh, let's talk about the lineup. So. What did they bring? Strafka brought Druid, Warlock, and Paladin. Yeah. And then Show has brought Warrior, Druid, and Paladin. So again, very, you know, a similar lines up in terms of the Druids being quite a common pick across the board. But the uh, we saw Strafka's cut like combo Reno Warrior. And I think, uh, sorry, Reno Warlock versus lining up pretty well versus Show's Warrior. So probably Show's going to try and dodge that, that matchup specifically. Yeah, and I, I kind of want to see it again because it's like a no Reno Warlock. <laughs> see, Reno Warlock <laughs> about Reno. Yeah, it's a little bit odd that we, uh, you know, Strathcore managed to get the strange ability to just never draw Reno. It makes it a little bit tough, but we did see the, uh, you know, the potential burst in that deck, even without a faceless, is there. And I, I think there's even potential for more from like the Dark Peddler or even Brand Dark Peddler. Like, that could be really powerful, just extra power overwhelming and things like that you're just not expecting as the player. 
Absolutely. So a very fun deck. And uh, in Strivecruise Druid deck, we've seen uh, Mind Control Tech, which is a nice uh, deck choice as well. Yeah, really interesting because it's not like a, it's quite common in like more ramp style druid decks, but to just like, you know, whip a mind control tech in, in uh, the sort of more standard druid deck list is pretty interesting just because it's a surprise factor, right? That's more than anything because a lot of people have been playing, you know, like maybe which one shade and like putting in something else instead. So like there is definitely space for something like that and uh, de can definitely catch your opponent off guard. Yeah, and then on the show side, we had uh, in the Patron Warrior, uh, Sir Finley Murgleton. That's a, a really nice card that can change your hero power into a Fire Blast. Yeah, even, um, so like a couple of the good ones, are the, um, the Fire Blast is pretty good, and then the, the Priest Heal is actually pretty nice, so you can just heal your Patrons back up to 3 health. So, you know, both of those are pretty reasonable. The Druid Hero Power is not bad either. Um, so, you know, the odds on you getting at least a, a decent one are pr pretty high, actually, when you think about it. Absolutely. So, Raven, let's, sum let's summarize what happened. This is day s this is Group C, third day of the tournament. We started on Monday. What happened on Monday? So, on Monday, we had Group A, which was Stan Sifka, Sixo, Kalento, and Dog. So, super stacked group. Um, and then, you know, after a lot of hard-fought games, Sixo having some rough games. I saw him on Twitter afterwards being like, Yep, sometimes you just cannot do anything <laughs> in, in the games and just, you know, the, the cards go like that. So, uh, but we did see Stan Sivka and Sixo go through, whereas Kalento and Dog did not go through to the top eight. And yeah. then the next day was Group B with Ecop, RDU, Pavel and Hoy. So another strong set of players. And uh, in the end, Pavel went through, which was probably, you know, if we're honest, just looking at sort of pure results based, the, the guy who you probably out of the four didn't expect to go through but he went through fairly convincingly yeah he um, had, uh, really good matches and he brought control decks uh so he also had like three off and three one scores if i remember correctly uh playing out freeze mage reno lock and a druid deck uh super patient player yeah and his freeze mage especially he was winning matchups that you just don't normally win right we saw him beat uh i think did he beat rdu's uh patron warrior uh with his freeze mage yeah which was really right. good you know like just really solid freeze mage play and that's a uh, you know, a lot of respect over to Pavel because Freeze Mage isn't a deck you can sort of just build and do okay with and mess about with. It's like, no, you need to be pretty damn good at that deck to be able to play it at this tier. Absolutely. But it ended up being with Pavel and Ecop going through and RDU and Hoy unfortunately falling short. Yeah, but you have to mention how Ecop won versus Hoy because there was this one moment where Ecop prayed for something good from Pilot to Shredder and, and Hoy had lethal in hand, but the lethal quickly disappeared when Ecop got the Vitality Totem to heal him up. <laughs> Yeah, that was pretty crazy. And we were actually just saying, weren't we? It's like, okay, so I think, you know, he needs a taunt or just something to just heal himself just a little bit. And lo and behold, there goes the Vitality Totem straight out of the Shredder. Similar to some of the Shredders we've seen today. I mean, I don't think it was on the stream, but the Shredder dropping the uh, the Totem in the previous match for just to buff Strife Crow's tokens to really push that extra damage in and close that game out. And then even earlier on when we saw the double four threes come out, the two Shredders at the same time was just insane. Absolutely, and today we are on game three, uh, show one versus, uh, let me quickly check, versus Orange. So show one versus Orange and Strife Crew one versus Life Coach, and right now they are facing each other in the winner's final uh, of, this, of this group. So the winner is going to advance to the top eight uh, playoffs, and the loser still will have one more chance um, to try to advance. Yeah, and uh, Strife Co's 1-0 uh, up currently. He uh, has got locked into his uh, Warlock versus Show's Paladin. And these were the decks the guys locked in before they just had, uh, did the quick restart. So there's no no funny business going on there, guys. These are the decks they plan to play regardless. So pretty good start for Strife Co. Hellfire is always nice versus Paladin and the Dart Bomb as well to remove things like a turn 2 Juggler. Yeah, I agree. And... Um... Most of the games where I see Reno Lock losing versus Paladin is uh, when they when they miss their turns. If they miss the, the AOEs, if they miss the heals, if they are not able to put enough um, meat on board to actually fight versus the, the, the good openings. And right now I see Show having a really good opening, actually. Yeah, this is really nice. And even the Cog Hammer to make, you know, just removing these mains a little bit more difficult. And I think we might see the power of Secret Keeper, even when there's nothing else on the board here, as Strifeco has to be tempted to dark on this, but then Show has the ability to follow up with a Knife Juggler. 
Raven, it is so crazy, but we haven't seen a Hubot and we haven't seen a Siphon Soul in Strife Chris deck yet. This is the first time we're seeing those cards, even though we assume that they are there. But we, I, I think like we've seen almost every card because the game the games were so long versus Life Coach, and he had to play it twice. But this is the first time we we see those cards, so maybe yeah, Strife Chris are... actually running heals. <laughs> wow, <laughs> which he's gonna be happy at having at least available for now. They're not amazing at this point in the game versus Paladin, but they're definitely going to help him stabilize and maybe, just maybe, he'll draw into Arena. So deciding to laugh tab instead of playing Iron Big Out to silence the, the Secret Keeper, um, which is which is fine. I mean, if there is be, uh, like, you all have to assume there is a possible coin into Master and the Owl will be dead, so throwing away Owl doesn't do much um, this, at this very moment. Plus, he does have the Hellfire for turn 4, so he should be able to snipe that Secret Keeper at some point. Yeah, but the setup now from show is really scary because Strifecrow can't kill both. And if he kills one, he buffs the other one out of range of Hellfire. So this is definitely a not enjoyable moment for, uh, for Strifecrow now. And not dealing with that Secret Keeper can sometimes uh, basically snowball, uh, snowball the game for the Paladin. Um, and it's really unfortunate because Strifecrow decided to not kill it with the Dart Bomb. Which is the sort of more, you know, the bit of a safer, just, you know, it'll be fine. But then the times you do, you don't kill it. You know, it can just run away, and we can see already it's just such a difficult board for Strive Crow to deal with now. Well, what he can do is um, he can play Zombie Chow and tap if he feels like he needs more cards. He knows he's going to Hellfire next turn. Uh, the problem with that is he's taking a lot of damage, but maybe at least uh, Zombie Chow is. Uh, is going to tank some. He decides to Dark Bomb um, and hopes this is not Avenge, but this is uh, Avenge specifically. So a good thing about it is he has a Silence for next turn, but five damage is a lot. Yeah. It'll be really interesting to see how, uh, whether Show plays the Noble Sacrifice and Hero Power to maybe Duke a second Avenge, um, or whether he just goes full Cog Hammer and, uh, and, do, and does something that way. It's going to be really rough, though, because as we said, the Owl will pretty much lock down this... Uh, is 6-6 six, six either way, but this is the better play to play around Owl, I guess, because then at least he's left with a token. Yeah, that's true. Um, but still, Owl is pretty good here. And, um, you know, taking damage for, uh, as a Reno lock can hurt in the beginning, but then ultimately you should have those uh, that, that Reno that you will draw into. You should. Nimsh, but <laughs> will Strife Crow ever draw Reno? If you play is it this, in your deck. <laughs> is this the mystery Reno plus Reno deck? Oh um, my! I kind of hope it is, just because it'll be funny more than anything. It's it's kind of impossible because you play one offs. Like if that would be a, a different deck, like I would assume that Strifecrow can play a freeze mage without Alex Straza and without um, I don't know like fireballs, uh, because like, he kind of did I think in, at one point. But um, if you don't play Reno <laughs> in a, in a deck, hey. there's no reason to go into a toolbox mode. <laughs> you said earlier, Strife goes known for playing some funky decks sometimes. <laughs> yeah, he does. Okay, so Hellfire looks almost a given here. Is there any reason you wouldn't over the Belcher? Because the Belcher, you know, dies to the tokens, whereas Hellfire gets reasonable value, resets the board, and it is only turn five to show next. It's not like he's leaving an empty board into turn six from the Paladin. So the problem with Belcher is that if there is Blessing of Kings, you just lose it. And uh, yeah. the problem with Hellfire is that you float one mana and you still take free damage. So both decisions are... Uh, what about... Can you play Healbot here? Like just slam Healbot, get to 25 and have a free free on board that still has to be kind of answered? Yeah, it's a tough one, isn't it? Um, I just... Mm, I would just like to clear clear the board leading up to the Mysterious Challenger turn. The Mysterious Challenger on its own isn't really a threat because of Siphon Soul. Yeah. So I just like clear the board now while you can because next turn if you play something like a uh, a Keeper of Alderman, then that's out of Hellfire range, right? So then that becomes harder to clear and then it leaves the minion. This is pretty good answer from Show though. I'll just drop a five five on the board and negate any spells. So we are probably going to see the uh, the sludge belt to come down now just to slow the low theft down yeah but it's pretty good for show as well because he has um cog hammer on the next turn and he can easily deal with the sludge belcher and keep his low theft intact yeah and we can see it doesn't actually eat into shows mana in terms of the six drop because he doesn't even have one 
So yeah. if you had Challenger, that would be a little bit, you know, a little bit different. So he kind of probably wants to play the Karkama, you know, obviously make the, uh, the Belcher set. Sorry, the Lotheb survive, but that's just easy. He has two Karkamas. He definitely wants to get these out of his hand. Now the big question is for Strife Crew, is there anything better than a Sludge Belcher? If, uh, because he knows if he slams Sludge Belcher, he just dies to the 5-5. Five five. If he goes for, like the other play is um, to, to get rid of the weapon, play Uz and Defender Vargas. And then the Uz stops um, Lotha, but Lotha doesn't die. And uh, it's not like Strife Crew really has anything to finish Lotha off. Like he will have the 2 free and that's it. But it's... Um, Again, he's floating one mana. Decides to go um, for Belcher, but I, I can't blame him for thinking about other other possibilities. Yeah, it's definitely worth it. And um, the thing is here, I think Belcher's just the overall most steady play. Um, it's unfortunate for Strife Crow that this just does get demolished quite easily from show. And now he has such a strong follow-up for turn 7. Um, and Strife Crow's running so low on health, I don't think this is a turn where he can happily just say, oh, I'm just going to play Dr. Boom and then deal with you next turn, because... How much damage do you take? He's taking eight. So there needs to be five damage next turn, which is difficult for the Paladin to um to to deal in one turn as additional damage. But also, you know, is he gonna just be put into the point where it's like, okay, I'm just not gonna let you attack? Yeah, I think uh that's basically um exactly what you said. Like five damage is really difficult for Paladin to deal. So Dr. Boom is probably, this is this might be the last moment to play Dr. Boom uh, quite safely and have a chance to, to find back for the board. And he still has the Healbot and Siphon Soul in his hand, so it's not like he cannot come back after playing Dr. Boom. Yeah, I mean, it looks like Dr. Boom is the only real thing that actually challenges the board. Anything else is just too slow. So although it's risky, a little bit risky for Strifeco, definitely the right play. And now it's how Sho's going to deal with this. He could actually just kill the 7-7 with his face kill one of the bombs and then play his own Dr. Boom and say, right, okay, now you answer mine. Um, but I kind of like just piling on the pressure and actually, even if he just goes like Sludge Belcher Creeper face with everything. What about his own boom? Just um, five to face, two to face, basically seven to face with Lothab and, uh, and damage, uh, with weapon damage, and then play his own boom. And um, and get the, the attack into bombs if you want to proc the bombs. Yeah, and the bomb even hits and goes one to face, which has got to feel pretty good. Yeah, because you want to pressure um, Reno lock as much as possible before they get Reno. So you hope there is no Reno now. But even if there is Reno, you're still in okay shape. Like Reno is six mana, and uh, you have your your Doctor Boom. So Doctor Boom will have to go into Lothab, but uh, Strifecore doesn't have it. So what's the play here? Uh, Siphon is it Siphon Soul turn? Uh, I think he just has to, right, to, to have any real chance here. Um, hmm. If he gets a lucky bomb, is there a, a way to go healbot into um, abusive coil if the bomb hits uh, Lothar? No, yeah, it's, it's, it's asking a bit much. I think Siphon Soul, uh, the 7-7 seven, seven into the 5-5, five, five, you I guess you just throw a bomb in, potentially coil and just drop anything you can. You can even play the use to, uh, to remove the weapon. If, if, if that's the way you want to go. We'll see what happens with the bomb, I suppose. I think that's pretty key. Uh, the bomb's going to run into the one of the other bombs and then see where it goes. Oh, the best so scenario think... is if, that, if Dr. Boom survives. Face damage. Go... Face damage is okay for Strife Cry, I think, at the moment. Ooh. Like, if bomb goes to face... Okay, four to face is never yeah, good. Yeah, I was going to say, like, <laughs> that much face damage, especially when there's a cog hammer in hand. Uh, oh, does that... Hmm... I mean, you, you've got to run the bomb in, right? You just run the bomb in first. There's no way you don't. Yeah, because you can just win if, mm. uh, if you get the He's hit bomb. three. And then you might slam Tyrion. If it, oh. if it misses, if it misses, right? All right, so it did miss because the, the cards are still glowing. So I guess... Hmm. You've seen Silence, you've seen Siphon Soul, and you know there are only one-offs, right? Uh, yeah. But um, Belcher with Cog Hammer is also nice. So yeah, I, I like this because you deal with um, you Dr. sort of you, you deal you almost guaranteed dealing with Boom with the weapon here. Uh, so that's dealt with. He could have left it up and then gone. You know, you have to deal with the Divine Shield and the Belcher and the Boom still dies. But like, how do you deal with this minion and you know deal with Tyrion afterwards? But Faceless Manipulator is definitely a, an interesting card and something that could be used uh, maybe next turn because. In the way it sort of used to be used. Back in the day, people ran Faceless Manipulator 
because everyone ran cards like Ragnaros, and it's like, you know what my answer to your Ragnaros is? My own Ragnaros. It's like five mana, play my own, BGH, the other one. So um, we might see that come on to Tyrion or the Belcher. Yeah, I, I really like the card because, like, obviously the, the reason to have it in the deck at the moment for Strife Crew is um, to um, reinforce the combo uh, with the um, Arcing Golem. But if he can steal one of the minions uh, from his opponent, it's also pretty nice. Like sometimes even uh, stealing Thorison. But here he's going to get that Belcher, um, which is a, a great survival card, you know? Just uh, having a 4 6 with the shield and taunt. Yeah, kind of interesting that he, that he chose to play the Argus and not the Coil. Um, this does stop the minion trading, but it does leave the Divine Shield up, so the Belcher is not going to take any damage. Because um, if there's any damage that comes down from, like, say, Consecrate to prop the shield, then the three attack from the Belcher, two attack from the weapon, uh, clears the first half, and now it doesn't with the Argus. But Mortal Coil onto the shield is definitely worth considering, I think. Right now, for sure, I feel Tyrion finally, especially after seeing Faceless, you cannot feel bad about it. And uh, the threat of Ashbringer, Strifeco being exactly at five, and the Ooze was uh, used as well, so you should be pretty happy about the Tyrion. Yeah, there's almost nothing that can really... I mean, hmm... I'm trying to work out what about Does he peddler into power overwhelming, coil the Tyrion, kill the Tyrion with a power overwhelming 2-3? Um, that's a possibility. Well, for now he's not dead for sure because he has a heal boss. Um, so getting something... Hmm, PO. Is this maybe... Instead of PO, is the abusive enough? If you take abusive here, because uh, you will coil the the Belcher, right? And then oh, I was talking about yeah, yeah. You can you can kill Belcher. I didn't know if he was going to go for killing Tyrion, but I suppose he doesn't want to give him a weapon too quick. I think what he might be looking at now is the potential of uh, he still has that arcane golem power overwhelming, right? Yeah, he does. So you know he can still do some. He can still do eight from hand if he can just sneak by this Tyrion. Oh man, Strifecrew is trying to position himself to be aggressive without Reno lock, and it would be so crazy if he actually wins with this Reno deck. No, it would be crazy. And we never see the Reno. I was going to say, <laughs> if he drew Reno, now that would be crazy, man. <laughs> and th this means that the deck is good, because if you have a combo, well, it's not a combo deck, but if you have a deck based around a specific card, and if the deck can still win when you don't draw that card, this means that the deck is, is good. Yeah, it's definitely pretty pretty reasonable. And the problem now is like, so Boom's gone, Tyrion's on the board, a Belch is gone. So this is when once you start dropping your bombs as the piloting, and then they start getting dealt with, if this you're is not drawing points. very good. Oh man, that was close. <laughs> Six, five, nine. That. Nine... Do by the way. No, it's fine. I'm just yeah yeah because he's one off lethal now, right? Yeah. Oh, it's so close. <laughs> <laughs> this game is crazy. So, would would you ever not avenge the... Uh, uh, sorry, Keeper of Alderman, the 1-1 the one -one here? Because I feel like it just puts too much power, so much power on the board. Yeah, um, That you can just almost guarantee... Well, oh. Oh, can Shadow oh. Flame actually... No, no, probably not. Yeah, but it is now... <laughs> oh! It's Reno! He oh, can man, heal. finally! <laughs> Changes everything. Um... Hmm. I'm just thinking, is Power Overwhelming the 2-1? Shadow Flame? Clear the 2 one ones. So your opponent has 5 damage from the weapon, no cards. Next turn you Reno, and then just win through that. Yes. That's, I, I think, think that's a really that's tasty safe. win. Because suddenly, 15 damage doesn't matter so much when you're on 30, and that 15 damage is over 3 turns. Yeah, and you still have Arcane Golem in your hand. Oh, yeah. man. <laughs> and, and you still have the minions, right? Because yeah, exactly. the, two, the two minions kill the two 1-1s, one and it's the 3-1 and the 2-1, so that's got to feel pretty good. And Paladin's a 10. And how yeah, and I guess, I guess you just play the Golem, because why not, yeah. Yeah. Wow. All right, so you can clear those minions here. There is a Nash Bringer, but it doesn't matter. Show needs to top deck six damage somehow. <laughs> I don't. Th well, the issue now for Show is that Shredder, as we've seen this evening, Shredder drops win games, but unfortunately he cannot kill his Shredder fast enough for him to get something insane. So what? What a game! Like on the back of um, that Shadow Flame actually. Oh man, the and most, the Reno, uh, the Reno is the actually useless now. Like the Reno wasn't even needed. <laughs>
<laughs> it's definitely, definitely crazy. I suppose the, the idea there is that, like, if Sho drew a belcher, then suddenly, you know, the damage is threatening from the weapon. But yeah, Reno wasn't even played. At least we saw it, though. We know it's actually in the deck. <laughs> yeah. Have you started doubting it after all the questions? No, well, no. What I was genuinely worried about is, like, you know, come on, you must have it, where you build a deck and then just, like, put a other card in by, like, a different six drop. Like, Sylvanas was in there by accident or something else, and you've just not put Reno in it. It's like, as Strifeco just forgot Reno like, in his Reno block. Uh, well, I think the explanation there would be that um, Strifeco is actually li uh, living with some teammates, kind of. Like, he's li uh, living <laughs> with Hai and uh, Tides of Time. So, like, Hai could have uh, make a joke on him and just, uh, you know, Strife goes in the bathroom, Hai sneakily goes into the room and then gets Reno out of the Reno lock and puts uh, something else, like a second Shadow Flame. Uh, sometimes crazy things can happen. I mean, I was streaming the other day and uh, I was playing uh, Patreon Warrior and at some point drew Wobbling Runts. And I had no idea how or why, but Wobbling Runts was in my Patreon deck for one game, which is very interesting. Was it good? <laughs> no, no, not even close. <laughs> There's a reason you've probably never seen that card in competitive Hearthstone ever. Oh man. <laughs> okay, so Strifecore is leading two to zero versus Show because he won with the Druid in a crazy game, and now a really fun game uh, versus Paladin, which was really close. And uh, it seemed like a Show has it. That Shadow Flame changed everything, right? But uh, again, like Strifecore at all times, Strifecore was super close with the power overwhelming Arcane Golem com uh, combo. Yeah, and what's, what's kind of interesting as well is I don't actually think the combo from Strife Crow affected Show's play that much, you know, like the, the potential of it. I think Show just played, uh, tried to be the dominant force in that matchup and just pressure Strife Crow enough that the combo doesn't matter. But we did see that that Shadow Flame draw was, well, pretty much game winning. And now Strife Crow's flat to f f falling back on his Paladin as his last deck, I believe. So, you know, when you've got your Paladin to get one game out of potential three when one's a mirror, you know, strife has got to be feeling pretty decent here. Absolutely. And the players are preparing at the moment, trying to connect and uh, start a game. So, if the Paladin wins, strife advances and Shao will be knocked out of the loser's bracket uh, to wait for his opponent uh, to show up, uh, either Life Coach or Orange. And if Strife Crew loses, then Show has a chance because, you know, um, not that far away, but uh, Show was losing versus Orange, 0 2. And then he won the series, 3 to 2. Yeah, it's definitely doable. And I'm quite enjoying the fact that he's waiting his opponents to show up. So uh, that was a pretty good name for that was on purpose or not. <laughs> um, I approve. But yeah, um, I mean, Show did the, you know, the reverse sweep versus Orange, like you said, the like mere hours ago. So. Uh, there's no doubt he has the potential to do it again, and it looks like it is going to be his warrior versus the paladin. Since you know, you just pick your best matchup first. Let's just you know get the win there. Yeah, absolutely. So, so warrior versus uh, paladin is a really nice one, especially with uh, Finley Murgleton, where you can change your hero power into something useful like a fire blast or or shapeshift, or even uh, rogue's hero power, which is really nice versus those dudes. Then Paladin versus Paladin, uh, show, we know the show is running Secret Keepers, so that's a, a possibility as well. And a Druid versus Paladin, um, well, we'll see. But th this is the, the one, the Patron versus Paladin. Yeah, and shows off to a really, really good start. For one, he has Patrons turn five, if he so desires. And then between now and turn five, he just has two Fiery War Axes to deal with all the early drops from Paladin. So show's probably started thinking... This might be one of the easier Patreon Warrior vs. Paladin games he's ever played. Yeah, even though Strifecore actually has a, a nice curve as well. Master into Shredder into Belcher into Mystery Challenger, so that's the dream curve. Yeah, I think it shows the, the power in this matchup where because shows like good cards kick in a turn earlier than Strifecrow's, then like even Strifecrow being on a good curve, I still think shows looking really good in this matchup. Yeah, I have to agree. But on the other hand, we've seen uh, Strife Cross struggling versus Druid before, and uh, and he was able to take that game with uh, with a Paladin deck. So, do not underestimate the power of the of this kind Strife. of Paladin. Yeah, <laughs> especially now with Keeper of Uldaman, where he can just uh, coin Keeper, kill the one free, kill the one one, and have uh, two solid minions on board that are great to challenge uh, possible patrons. Yeah, again, I think we discussed it on Tuesday where the flexibility of that card is insane. 
the, the way you can just flip it one way or the other, the other in terms of buffing a small minion, debuffing a, a large minion on your opponent's side. So it's really good, and we are going to see that come into play now. Make the 1-1 one, one effectively now trade with a 1-3 while still staying alive and putting a lot of power on the board. But we do see shows probably going to follow up with the death bite. Uh, just to clear off one of these minions, and then he can start dealing with the uh, the board the following turn. Yeah, absolutely. But then, like because of that play, Strife Crow will always have uh, at least one minion that's alive, or or two minions that are alive. Because Pilot Shredder is going to uh, get on board next. Uh, there's Blessing of Kings as well. Not really that useful, I I guess. Uh, you might be afraid of execute. So Pilot Shredder really a uh, good choice. But for show, a big turn is coming. Yeah, this is an interesting one though. I'm just okay. He is just going straight up for. Okay, I was wondering whether he wanted to roll the dice a little bit, um, in terms of attacking in, generating two patrons. Oh, okay, he's doing it this way. Fine. Yeah, I was gonna say he kind of wants to remove that spider somehow, and he could have used in a rage, but instead he's choosing to leave up the shredder, which is the much safer play and more reasonable because. You always want your opponent to proc their own Shredder over you doing it because it's always so awkward to deal with. So this is pretty nice. See the Belcher's prob... Uh, well, Belcher's potentially going to be dropped by Strive Crow, but, you know, show's pretty much all over it, especially with the Fire War Axe ready to go. So what do you kill? Um, if you kill the 5-1, you kind of protect the Belcher. If you kill the 3-3, you might get a 2-1 charge Murloc and kill the 3-2 as well. And if you, play, if you kill the 3-2 you deny one card draw from uh, Battle Rage. So you have potentially three different patrons with three different outcomes. Yeah, and this is why the matchup is so hard when you, the Warrior gets the patrons the turn before. Strife Girl did get a reasonable drop from the uh, from the Shredder there, but oh, he's going for Muster. Wow, I'm not sure about this. I mean, he picks off the 5-1, but he just throws his 1-1s his towards the patrons. And with the Fire War Axe ready to go from show, he can actually clear off this 3-2 to make his board even more stable. But isn't it... Uh, okay, so it's kind of... it's kind Like, f the first thing you think about is uh, it's it's bad, it's weird, because there will be more patrons. But isn't it brilliant? Like, the 3-2 patron will attack into a 1-1. One, one. You get a 3-1 patron that can easily be dealt with a weapon, and a 3-3 free, free patron that you will be able to kill with uh, a 2-2. Two, two. Um, or um, with Blessing of Kings, right? Then another patron goes into one into one of the 1-1s, one and you get a 3-2 patron that you can kill with the Shielded Mini Bot, and a big patron that you might not kill this turn, uh, or you may with the 3-2. So possibly Strife Crow had, uh, without the Fire War Axe, Strife Crow actually had an option to uh, to clear everything. Unfortunately for him, yeah. there is a Fire War Axe and an Inner Age as well. Oh, more unfortunately, there's a girl that's going to come down and do all that work for him. Um... The girl seems like a super good pickup here. And I, I agree what you're saying, Ninch, completely. I just think, like, even after all of that, it's still hard for Strive Crow. The second you leave one patron alive as a 3 3, or even a 3 2, they can then just continue to generate more afterwards. But this is going to be really nice for show. That girl was massive. The fireworks was good, but the girl was insane. Yeah, there is no silence for Strive Crow, so this is really tough. Uh, whatever, whatever happens, this girl is going to. To explode at some point. Even if Strife Crow doesn't pop the goal, uh, Cho will do it without problems. So what's the play? <laughs> what's the play, Raven? What can Strife Crow do here? Es escape, concede, uh, maybe. You you <laughs> might you might consider that. I think like it it is still too early to escape, concede, because if you drag um, the game long enough, maybe you will have your chance to come back at some point. You still have some minions on board. But uh, attacking to a goal seems bad. You don't want to enable more patrons that will attack. So not attacking is an option. And uh, if you do not attack, what's the best? Uh, do you slam Mistress Challenger, get all the secrets at this at this turn? Or... Yeah, it's really tough because if you don't attack, then Whirlwind ruins you as well. So like, there's no good answer. Um, it looks like Strapco is just going to go for Mysterious Challenger because effectively with the cards he has, it's just the most powerful card. Um, I guess he's going to kill a 3-2 with the minibot. Yeah, just clear that off. There's only three patrons now. Okay. Um, and again, what, what this does is similar to what you're saying earlier in terms of the attacks, where you imagine either the Armsmith or the 3-3 patron's going to run in. Um, so they're at least two patrons are on one health, right? So, yeah. you know, like, there's there's something. You have two on one and two on three, um, and then deal with that. So it makes it a little bit easier, but I really think Strivecon needs to get into uh, Tyrion. 
to have any uh, good chance of surviving this. Or maybe a really good consecration if you fill out the board and there is seven minions and you somehow can consecrate to kill everything. But uh, he was playing one consecration, I think. We've seen one at some point. Yeah. And the consecrate would be, and yeah, you're right. Consecrate would be another potential out. This is so scary though, because what Sho can do. Oh, okay, he's going for the trade this way. He is going to use the execute, but I was going to say he's, he's in the position that we saw earlier. Um, in the match where you can just ignore the big guy because you're on like over 20 health and you'll just swarm the board even more but he's able to use the execute and just clear up and still have enough patrons for let's be honest for Tyrion to just not really be an issue yeah and it, and it shows why this matchup can uh, be really good for warrior uh, even though Strifeco had the curve he had everything there um, up to mysterious challenger show is still an absolute command of the of the match of the game yeah, and um, but the, the key thing to remember is, like, imagine if the patrons didn't come down, right? Strafko just like, rage quit. <laughs> yeah, Strafko's like, left. whatever. I'm gonna, you just kill me, I'll be back in a minute. I'm just going to go and grab a drink. <laughs> but if the patrons didn't come down as smoothly as they did from show, suddenly you start to think, like, you look at Strafko's board at the time, and suddenly it's actually pretty scary for the warrior. But being able to get those patrons on, I mean, they're still on the board. Like, what are we on, like, three turns later? Then there's, they're still there. <laughs> there's just nothing that Strivko can actually do about it. So much to the extent that he's actually just left the room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, Sho is still alive, and he's winning with Warrior, and this is exactly how his comeback versus Orange happened. He won with that Warrior, and then was able to you, win you know with Paladin. You know it would be really good? And it wouldn't happen, but it would be funny. If Strivko left, and the next minute you just see Strivko in the background of Sho's camera. <laughs> just coming in with like a chair, just to swing at him, and it's like goddamn patrons, <laughs> and then he just walks back onto his own camera. Oh, that would be that so would funny. that would be so mean because it would be mean. It'd be a little bit creepy as well. Um, yeah. but, but you know, like, Sh Sho be... can't hear Twitch chat scream, so they won't be able to let him know before it's too late. But you know, it would be mean in a way that right now we do hate on Secret Paladin, not on uh, patrons. That's true. Yeah. But Secret Paladins, um, what, uh, okay, it's a very quick answer for you, or a question for you to answer quickly, Nemch. Do you think Secret Paladins going to hang around after uh, Standard? Because there's only, in terms of secrets, Avenge that's going to get removed. Um, I think it will, because uh, like you still lose a lot of cards, actually. Like You lose the Shielded Minibot, uh, you do lose Master for Battle, and... Um, and uh, something else as well, I think. And some of the shredders. basic cards and shredders. So some basic cards can be changed, but uh, and then Belcher, <laughs> you actually lose a lot of good cards. Yeah. Not all, not all versions run Belcher in Secret Paladin, though. I'm just thinking that like Mysterious Challenger pulling out so many cards, even if one of them is an Avenge, and then missing some other cards from Paladin. Like the actual raw effect of that is so strong that it could still be a deck. Yeah, I think I think Mysterious Challenger will survive in some form because um, I, I feel like all of the archetypes we know, like a lot of archetypes are gone in standard when the rotation hits, but uh, a lot of archetypes that are, that we think we will survive uh, because they are based on the basic set might get nerfed, and in that case, Mysterious Challenger uh, should be should be still alive at least this year because uh, next year in 2017 it will rotate out, rotate out. Yeah, and I think that, um, you know, with the removal of Muster and Minibot, you have to imagine in the expansion, Blizzard will put in some low drops to sort of circumvent that issue. If, you know, you can, I doubt they're just going to remove low drops from power and be like, well, yeah, you've got to play uh, Bloodfen Raptor now. <laughs> or Crocolisk. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Solid. So, Solid fingers crossed. I think it's going to be powerful, but let's get back in this game, which is Striker's Secret Paladin again. Uh, pretty good start. And it's versus Show's Secret Paladin. Yeah, that's so it's pretty decent uh, having Secret Keeper in the on the first turn. Uh, this is a card we discussed a bit. Uh, really nice. Like some people play Zombie Child, but Secret Keeper in the uh, Paladin heavy meta game uh, is really good, especially because it's getting buffed by opposing secrets as well. Yeah, it puts on so much pressure when the um, the you, like one Paladin has one. And the other one doesn't. Like that's so bad for the one that doesn't, because you start to just have to play really wonkily. Because as we saw in the earlier match, if you ignore it, then you know, like that's going to be an issue <laughs> because it can potentially grow, but it might not. So like we saw, like it not get dark bombed, and then like a turn or so later, it was a six six. So like you know, things like that can happen. But show 
being able to deal with this pretty well, I think. Uh, if the muster ever hits, oh, oh wow. Wow, that was a yeah. really important <laughs> that's, mess. That's pretty horrible. And he's like, why did why did this happen? I and lost my shock. Is and, Joe gonna trade? And this if is he so doesn't, funny because, look what Strive Crow is gonna do to him. This is so funny because he had a, a clear kill with the Cog Hammer. If you would play Cog Hammer instead, he just goes face or into it um, and gets the Noble Sacrifice out, and then uh, the Divine Shield Juggler kills it without any problems. And now, even though the percentage chance was really low, he still missed it. Yeah. Do you, uh, I mean, so Consecration is another card that uh, are very, very important in the mirror, as a lot of decks don't run Consecrate, and some run one. I personally like one. Because of things like this, you just answer muster and completely blow the Paladin out, or your opponent Paladin out, should I say, and just clear up the board. And now Strive Crow has the... Uh, you know, he is behind in terms of, like, you know, it's the weapon and the shredder versus nothing. But surviving that muster and being able to clear it off was probably worth that. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks to that, he is actually in a, in a okay shape, uh, more or less. So, um, looking at turn five for, from show, he is going to get a minion and it will really uh, depend on what kind of minion he gets. A 2-2 bear is uh, not bad, but uh, whatever he would get, it was probably a Koghammer play anyway. Unless... Yeah, he could actually just mini bot uh, avenge hero power. Feels okay. Um, yeah. He doesn't. I don't think he needs the because uh, if the you know the weapon goes into the two two, then you've potentially got an avenged mini bot, which is pretty reasonable. Um, so I, I kind of like this play. Uh, you don't need to rush the car hammer yet, and this just guarantees such a powerful mini bot that it's really good that the you know the thing you got out of the shredder was a taunt because this weapon is. Probably going into it, and you know what? If Strife Girl doesn't true silver it, then Show's probably feeling good about getting another two damage in. It also blocks Keeper of Uldaman a bit, <laughs> because now when you play Keeper, you have to target a minion. Oh, yeah, yeah, because you can't. Uh, yeah, it's like uh, the big Game Hunter effect, isn't it? Uh, of, like, if, if you have a Molten Giant down and you play BGH and that's the only one, you're killing your own Molten Giant. <laughs> well, you still have to click on it, but uh, yeah, it's basically you cannot play it if you don't want to kill your yeah. own minion. Uh, same with Keeper of Uldaman, like, you cannot uh, play it as a blank. So, uh, if you're fine with buffing opposing minion and killing it with the, f uh, with the weapon, that's fine, and you get a free for it. That, that might, actually might be the play, because going into Juggler and a dude doesn't feel that great, unless you, s uh, you actually kill the 1-1, one -one, Avenge lands on a, f uh, on a bear, and then you kill the bear with the weapon. Yeah, I think you might have... To, at this point, you might have to play that risky play here. He kills the 1-1. One, one. Wow. Where's the Avenge? Is it a bear or a oh, he bot? It goes, it goes on the bear. bear. What? And with Strife a shake of the gone. head, Strife Girl just demolishes Show's carefully put together plan, and that mini bot is still at 2-2. Two, two. Well, oh, Show wow. is... Um, <laughs> oh, man. Secret Keeper is not something you want to get on turn 6, but uh, Show is still... <laughs> ahead a, a bit on board at the moment, but then we're going to see Mistress Challenger from Strife Crow into Dr. Boom into Tyrion. <laughs> that, that six, seven, eight play we sometimes hear about when playing against Secret Paladin. Now and again. <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's a fun to watch. Uh, this match is uh, really interesting because of those RNG uh, moments. I can't believe that juggle. That was insane. That was like the <laughs> perfect outcome. Uh, he had to hit the juggle, which was a one in four to start off with. Then the event had to go on like the fifty-fifty chance. That's crazy. Yeah, but still, this means that show is ahead with Doctor Boom, and um, now even with Mis with Mistress Challenger, I guess uh, there will be no way to go through a, a taunt shielded me bot, um, and then you cannot kill Boom, and you're at fifteen, even lower yeah. actually. And this is really displaying the difference in playing Mysterious Challenger pretty much on its own versus playing it on a board with a few of the minions down. Because this single minion now is worth nothing because all it can do is kill a Divine Shield. And that's uh, 13 damage, so that's lethal. Uh, you can go for Keeper of Uldaman to reduce Dr. Boom. And um, and then you get the Shield and Mini Ball, I guess. So that wasn't a bad pickup for, for Stripe Crow, even though it didn't look that exciting with the cards next to it. But he's not dead yet, at least. Yeah, and the thing is, he has Tyrion while Show's just trying to haunt a creeper. So again, you know, Show can dump these on the board, and hopefully, if they show the bombs, will do a lot of work now. 
But when Tyrion comes down, like, Show needs a pretty quick answer because at the moment, nothing really threatens Tyrion's once these bombs are gone. But when your bombs hit for four, <laughs> yeah. you just straight up kill something, then fair enough. So it's still a fair game. Like, actually, the bombs would whiff. Uh, suddenly, Strykrow has a, a, a huge lead with that Tyrion. But uh, if the bombs actually work and uh, Show is able to stop the 10-7, the or at least keep the 2-2 the, the two, two taunts um, from the 10-7 connecting and drive creeps more, maybe he'll be able to have enough of a big board to go through Tyrion because he's still comfy on the 19 health. Yeah, he can definitely afford to take a hit. It's whether it's really is just about where this bomb goes and how comfortable the show's going to be. All right, Mr. Bomb, where do we go? Of course, it killed another minion. <laughs> That's not bad. Yeah, and now this is looking pretty scary, especially with the creeper down, which doesn't look like much. But, you know, that minion just won't go away fast enough. So is it enough to uh, go for Tyrion and deal damage? Uh, the Tutu is going to get uh, get killed. Ooh. Then there is a... Oh, that actually might change things. Because now you have a big uh, taunt with Divine Shield, which is uh, basically as Tyrion. And have, you have minions to come back as well. And then you have a Tyrion as a follow-up. So that might be much better. Yeah, and looking at this, he can only just kill the challenger with everything he has. So if, if he, So he would go weapon into the 2-2, two -two, Challenger into the boom to use the Divine Shield, then all he can do next turn is kill the Challenger, unless he top decks something, of course, for extra damage. The downside is Drive Crow will be on 2 health, but the upside is if he survives that next turn, he then goes on to Tyrion, which is then something else the uh, Paladin has to get through. Yeah, that's true. Yes, I, I think it's still really good for Strive Crow here. And, um, I think you have to do the card counter play. Yeah, 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 yeah. Especially because then you get the Shredder on board, uh, can trade up. And there's obviously no um, way to go into uh, go face because then you're just dead. Yeah, this is looking okay. This is going to be really close. Go oh, wow, another creeper. So that's a blank. Uh, you have to kill the challenger. Three, five. But you can't do it. Like, you have to face tank the challenger. Not even face tank, just. Deal that one last damage, right? Yeah. Oh man. Like even a secret would be okay because then the secret saves you ten damage. That is pretty crazy. And Strifer at two health. Two health, but then Tyrion. And actually if there's an Iron Beak or Consecrate, then Show wins. This is getting really close, and the thing is, does Show even run those cards? And not, a lot a lot of powers don't actually run the uh, run an owl or a consecrate. Yeah, so um, like Owl, so... I think Owl is less common. Um, Owl doesn't really play. Um, is there a possible juggler? Like if Haunted Creeper survives, then maybe juggler will be the way to win this game? Yeah, it's definitely going to be tight. And then Strife Girl's just going for it and saying, right, Show, you need to draw an answer this turn or it's over. Keeper of all the is draw... that lethal? He trucks the shoot. No, he can only do... Oh man, he got a oh. juggler! He got a juggler, he has three juggles! Oh god, here, here we go guys, the, everyone's favorite part of oh, Pathstone. Oh man! There's one! There's one to face, what? Oh wow, yeah, he two killed him? Oh to my face. god, <laughs> Trapker just took that damage! Oh my god. Oh man. Oh my god. That juggle, I told you Raven, I told you. <laughs> oh my oh god, that's insane. To, and the thing is, it's not like, oh you know, hits one, misses one. Hero power hits another one. It's like, no, I'll just make two tokens and kill you with them. It's like, wow, what, what a game. Lethal, easy. <laughs> oh, yeah, you just all you do is just play juggler and hit two juggles. They're perfect. It's fine. You know what's the, the best part? Like, this is one of the most beautiful parts of being a caster. You just name the play and it happens in front of your eyes and you can't believe it happened. Oh, I thought you meant, like, laugh at other people's uh, misfortune, but, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> well, yeah, call it as you want. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, it's pretty nice when you just call call it exactly how it happened. But th this is rough now. I mean, for, for Strife Crow, a show we already saw against Orange come back from 0-2, and he may well be about to do it versus Strife Crow, so he doesn't like to do anything too easily, show by the looks of things. He likes to take the hard road, but he does manage it. Well, you know, he loves Hearthstone, he loves playing Hearthstone, so he can kind of put himself in a position where he plays more games. Like, why, why play three games versus Strife Crow when you can play five? Yeah, why not? Let's just play more Hearthstone. That's what we all really want to see, isn't it? Well, you do play for those moments with the Jaguar, right? 
<laughs> yes, that's why I love Hearthstone so much, the uh, juggler effect. It is absolutely going to make it to, to my next music video on Hearthstone that I do. What, the, those juggles? Yeah, yeah. Fantastic, I look forward to it. All right, so the last deck for show is Druid, and uh, Strifecrow still trying to fight with that uh, Paladin deck. And uh, what do you think? This is a good matchup for Strife, right? Yeah, I think uh, it's going pretty good. And you know, let's be honest, Strife Crow's luck can only get better at this point, um, as that was pretty grim. But uh, but yeah, I think it's okay. But Druid always has the capability to ramp and then just you know just overthrow any deck. To be honest, you know, and it, it, the second Strife Crow doesn't have a good answer to a Druid of the Claw, things might get really difficult. I wonder how affected he is by those juggles. <laughs> yeah, I'd be a little bit upset if it was me. But it was the fact that were, it wasn't like, oh, we hit two out of three. You know, fine, you have to roll three to four juggles or something like that. It's like, nope, just two juggles. He didn't even hit hero power preemptively. It was just like, nope, I got this. I got this, right? The, the creeper juggles, they're fine. All right, looking at Striker's hand at the moment, uh, Noble Sack, Divine Favor goes out. Holy Creeper can stay. Uh, that's a two mana minion. And he's looking for, well, Secret Keeper, um, Master for Battle, just to have a, a good opening, aggressive opening, where he can deal as much damage in the beginning as possible. Yeah, and even even off curve, like a mini bot wouldn't be terrible. Because then if you go into like mini bot, um, Blessing of Kings, you can suddenly remove that Druid of the Claw that's going to come out, you know, pre you, you expect to come out on turn 5. And he gets two secrets, which is uh, quite bad. You don't want to have secrets. Uh, and the Divine man. Favor. Oh, oh, man. At least at least the secrets help him clear his hand for Divine Favor. Yeah, it, uh, it would be okay, if not for the fact that uh, Sho actually has a, a really good hand. Sho has almost like a god hand. Would you specifically want versus Paladin uh, when you when you play this matchup? You want that swipe that I mentioned before um, to have a counter versus um, possible master for battle, and you really want to have Innervate into Pilot to Treader or Innervate into Keeper when something is being played. You want to pressure first, and this is so good with Show having not only the turn one Pilot to Treader that cannot be contested. He has Wrath on turn two if needed to draw a card or maybe kill something. Or even shapeshift, and then he has that swipe on turn four as a follow up to to turn three master. Yeah, and from Strive Coast side, although the secret keeper looks like a really good pickup, I would be pretty surprised if we didn't play secret keeper noble sacrifice. Um, but that does get locked down pretty hard through wrath, so it's going to be rough because the other secret is avenge. So this is going to be kind. Of, it's going to be really rough for Strive Coast, at least at the moment. Can he go for creeper? Because uh, whatever happens, uh, Creeper stays on board somehow. And then you have uh, two spiders for a possible Avenge. Yeah, I think because the Avenge, that's probably why Strive Crow's really weighing it up. Um, I would always... Because you, you feel like after an Innovate coin shredder, you feel like you... In the mindset, oh, he can't have Wrath, right? So like it's very difficult not to play the Secret Keeper and the Secret there. Um, but you're right, the Creeper is pretty good just for the Avenge potential. I think the problem with the Secret Keeper Avenge was that it just gets countered by the Shredder. So, Shapeshift phase and uh, Avenge procs, Shredder attacks into Secret Keeper. And you have nothing, they have a minion. But uh, here, Show is the one to pressure, deal some early damage. That's what you want to do as a Druid in the matchup. You just want to put a pad in as low as possible uh, so that when they play Mystic Challenger, just say well played and go for phase and win the game. <laughs> Yeah, exactly, because you hit the point where you can actually just ignore it. Uh, and because it's a druid, you can just hero power through that noble sacrifice. That's always something that makes can make this matchup a bit awkward for the paladin sometimes, when you can't put the opponents in those positions where, where you kind of just have to attack with a minion, and then you make the minion really awkward, the one that they have to attack with. Um, Strathcoast just going to follow up here with the secret keeper and the noble sacrifice, so he probably is going to eat a wrath this turn. Um, Hmm. Interesting. Do you go crazy and try and like wrath innovate swipe? Because the problem shows got because of his quick start, he's not got a great hand to continue the game with into the mid to late game. Hmm. Uh, well, there are two secrets, right? So if you go for shapeshift first, see what's going to happen where Avenge lands, then you can make your cho your choices. So for example, 
If you, uh, you shapeshift and double sacrifice and uh, avenge lands on a spider, you can uh, kill the spider with the shredder and then innervate swipe to clear the board and clear the secrets, and you still have a minion. So that's something you can do. Um, this is uh, this is kind of similar. Like you can kill the creeper, or even ignore the creeper for now. Yeah, do, do, I was gonna say, do you kill it or do you actually? Because the problem is like the the paladin's gonna need to pull something good out of the bag on turn four for you to uh, want to kill that creeper. And I think this is pretty nice. You keep the shredder. And speaking of pulling something out of the bag on turn four, Strife goes straight into a piloted shredder, uh, which must feel pretty good because now the two four fours. Uh, or the two four attack minions, sorry, from Strifeco's side, if he chooses to play the Shredder, really do pretty well against Strifeco. But he does have an option of actually playing Knife Juggler, running the 4 4 in, and then hoping the uh, the tokens kill off what's left of the Shredder. What? Yeah. Death Rattle goes off first, actually. That's. Uh, oh, the, the Shredder was innovated, right? The so Shredder the was shredder. innovated on turn one, so. It's, <laughs> it's actually a pretty good question, because when you look at Haunted Creeper and Shredder, you're thinking, yeah, like Haunted Creeper turn two. And then Shredder somewhere around uh, turn three or four, right? Like, not really. It was turn one Shredder. Well, if the Shredder was out after the Creeper, then Strivko almost certainly would have just played Shredder his own by now. But because it wasn't, and the Juggles could potentially kill what comes out of the Shredder, as well as having a hero power token for a third Juggle, there really was food for thought as to whether you should try and play that. I suppose the only issue there is you get shut down very hard by Swipe. I like the fact how the players refuse to trade into minions and they are trying to um, pressure op opponents to actually start trading and um, and start doing things. But Sho has a really good hand to race and he just continues going for face here. Yeah, and Strifeco can get a few juggles out here. Um, and again, it's keeping it to the point where Divine Favor isn't great. He could Divine Favor for two now, but it just doesn't feel great on this board. He's going to see where the Juggles go first, and Raven. probably more importantly, what comes out of the Shredder. What do you have versus the two cards for free mana? <laughs> Seriously, it's what? not that bad. <laughs> yeah, but when the follow when when like there's no follow-up, when it's Juggler, draw two cards. Yeah, it's not I fantastic. agree. And he missed all the Juggles! Oh, after all that, he had to run both minions in, and that Shredder stood there like, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? <laughs> Can you win this game uh, Game right here? The 6 plus uh, 8, that's uh, 14. So that's actually, like, I would not mind going for face with everything. Um, I mean, Droid of a Claude and uh, Innervate Savager. But obviously, Swipe seems really good on this board. Uh, how much damage is there? There is uh, 10 damage, so there is no way Paladin is going to kill you. Next turn, what can actually... Like, you will have Paladin on floor, so the only card that stops your win is Lothab. But you still have two minions. Like, you have a 4-4 four, four Cat and a 4-3. So Sho has to decide, does um, does he want to go for Druid of a Claw, Charge, Innervate, Savager, Savager, and goes 14 to face, uh, and continue on his plan, and he's going for it. This is really interesting, because, like, he, so this is very much either I win next turn or you win next turn, and that's it. Um, and also, what this does is make Divine Favor terrible, because um, Strifeco has 10 damage, um, he can clear up, but not heal, because Secret Paladin, other than like the, the one true silver they normally run, have zero healing, so you're pretty confident that once the damage is done, it's done. And I don't know what Strifeco could draw here that would keep him in it, and Juggler definitely isn't a card, and uh, has Show done it again, guys? Yeah, Show does it again! He has a reverse sweep with... Hang on. The, the... What could be... No, nothing could come out. <laughs> heal your opponent for four, like, no, nothing's coming out of that Shredder that'll save the day. Yeah, well, Strafko doesn't know that there is a swipe in Shell's hand, so he still needs to clear this board and hope for the best. So he doesn't know he's uh, dead yet, but uh, did show target Paladin with his lineup, and uh, it worked. It really worked, because Orange wasn't able to win with Paladin versus Shell's lineup, and now Strafko struggled as well and um, and lost. Yeah, I mean, I think he, he's, he like, half went for it, because Sho, I, mean, I, th I think the second you take Patron, you're feeling pretty good if you get the Paladin lined up, but Sho did take his own Paladin, which, you know, you just, the mirror's the mirror, um, and then with his own Druid, which is pretty standard, so I don't think Sho particularly aimed at Paladin, but I think he actually just likes Patron Warrior a lot. I, I, th I think that with those juggles in the last game, he specifically aimed at Paladin. Oh, okay, oh, okay, I was waiting for something <laughs> like this. Uh, you are completely right, of course, Nim. She's jugglers aimed uh, for Paladin, definitely. And yeah. as proven, and Show's done it again, 3-2. I mean, what a stupid set in, like, the craziest of ways. 
Yeah, it was uh, it was actually great, and uh, this means that Show is advancing to the top eight playoffs, joining Stan Sivka, Sixo, Ecop, and Pavel, and uh, we still have to decide who is the other person. Uh, the next match, the upcoming match, will be Life Coach versus Orange, and then the winner of that match will face Strife Crow. So, guys, thank you so much for watching so far. We still have two more matches for you today, so stay tuned for more Hearthstone. We'll be back after a short break.